name is Steve from HoopPro.com and today I'm going to demonstrate how uh, I do the overpack method for Nukla. Uh, now I say it's for Nukla because it's the only brand that I've seen recommended for this method and uh, it's the only brand I've used for this method and I suspect that it wouldn't work well with um, other brands that are very wet. Nukla is a, is a rather dry shisha and I, I, I don't know for sure but I don't think this would work well with, with a very wet shisha. So what is the overpack technique? Well, we all know uh, standard packing technique um, basically says put your shisha in there, I'm not going to do this completely or maybe I will. Put your shisha in there and just pack it below the rim. Uh, sometimes, usually with Nukla, what I'll do is is pile it up just above the rim a little bit and then I'll pack it down lightly. Uh, if you just saw, Oramac just put up a video, I basically I use that same technique. Now with the overpack technique, what you do is uh, this is knucklehead double apple by the way uh, works for me this is I've had the best results with this I've also done it with sweet melon and it worked very well with that also but I gotta get a bunch of shisha out of here <clears throat> now this is a um, I don't know if the, I'm not sure if this is what John uh, on his website sells uh, he calls this a small Egyptian bowl it is about it's under two inches in diameter and about a half an inch deep. Now, but you can use any size Egyptian bowl. It's got, it should be an Egyptian bowl, though. I don't think that uh, you'd want to try this with a funnel bowl or a vortex bowl or something like that. Probably work with a modern bowl. Anyway, um, basically what you do with the overpack technique is get a bunch of shisha, break it up and just take a whole pile of it and drop it on there and the recommendation the common recommendation is that you should end up with as much shisha out of the bowl as you have in the bowl so you have a mound that is at least equal to how much is inside the bowl uh, you can go, I actually find you can go a little more than that. And my cat is whining over there. Okay. <clears throat> so that's about it. You just kind of put it in there. You can pack it down a little bit, but you're going to pack it <clears throat> when you put the foil on. Kind of pack it. I'll show you. Now, obviously, using this technique, the big one of the big differences here between this and a standard bolt packing technique is that your foil is obviously touching the shisha. Now, you don't have to get the foil real tight. Um, the idea behind getting the foil tight with a normal bowl packing technique is to keep the foil off the shisha. Obviously, this isn't a concern in this case. <coughs> so, You're going to end up with slightly mounded foil. And I usually push it down a little bit. And then I poke my holes. Now, the common recommendation is to use fairly large holes for this. Um, for this bowl, I, I use a toothpick and um, I push the toothpick in quite a ways. I usually start with one row of holes right along the edge of the bowl. I, I actually let the toothpick ride down the uh, edge of the bowl and I poke it all the way to the bottom to encourage airflow. Now you might be thinking that when you put your coals on this is going to burn up, um, but I'll show you that it doesn't. And I usually put in uh, two or three rows of holes, fairly big holes. 
I've seen with larger bowls, people actually recommend using a bam bamboo uh, shish kebab skewer. And then one hole in the middle, all the way through, all the way through the hole, the center hole of the bowl. Okay, now when you put your coals on, I'm going to put two natural coals on here. I think you can hear that sizzling. Usually what I do is I, I'll let these sit here for just a little bit. Maybe just 10 or 15 seconds. And then I rotate them right away. The idea here is to sear the top of the shisha to the bottom of the foil. And that searing um, helps to prevent um, burning. It's, it's, not, it's not burning. If, if you could smoke it now, it wouldn't taste burnt. And it doesn't taste burnt um, once you get it going. Now I'm going to put my wooden cover on here and just let it cook for a few minutes. Okay, this has been just cooking here for not long, just a couple of minutes. I'm going to take a pull off and see where it's at. Oh man, the big advantage to using this technique is it really intensifies the flavor. With double apple, in my experience, it intensifies the uh, anise flavor, the black licorice flavor. Which <laughs> probably a lot of you are going, oh, then I'm not going to try it. But... So there it is, uh, maybe a little bit long-winded, uh, a little bit too long, I apologize. Um, if you're a knuckless smoker, I strongly suggest trying this technique out, experimenting with a little bit. Uh, I do think you'll you'll notice uh, in, an intensity of flavor um, and then it's just a matter of getting your heat management down and, and uh, trying to extend that which I personally haven't quite uh, gotten to that point yet I'm still experimenting with this so there it is um, be sure to stop by the website at www.hookapro.com and thanks for watching Thank <laughs> you.